I start with a simple question. When you think about what makes a philanthropist, who is a philanthropist, who is the first person that comes to your mind? Now I'm gonna guess that most of you all were thinking Bill Gates. <laughs> well, now I know I guess I'm a little bit of a mind reader. Now when you thought about Bill Gates or whoever came to mind, you have this image in your head of what makes a philanthropist or who can become a philanthropist. And that's simply because we all have a very narrow view of what philanthropy really is. But what if I told you that everyone sitting in this room is a philanthropist. Let's go back a little bit. I want us to all think about when we were a little child. Let's go back to childhood a little bit. Think about the experiences you might have had in the classroom. Think about how you felt when you left home and came to school, or maybe even how you felt when you left school and went back home. Now I can imagine that some of you might have really great memories to think back on, and some of you might have some not so great memories. And if you have memory loss, you might not have many memories at all, right? But when you're thinking back on those memories, particularly think about some of those experiences that you had with others. Think about some of those things you were very passionate about as a child. Some of the interactions that, you, that took place between you and something you really, really cared about. This can be any interaction. As a child, we all had something that we cared a lot about. We all had something that we always wanted to make sure was safe. We always want to make sure was protected and taken care of. We had something as a child that we would do anything it took to make sure it was okay. Now, if I had to give a, a personal example, now, I was a little bit of a mama's boy when I was little. So an example that I can think of is when I left school and went home, I would do whatever I could to make sure my mom was happy. So even if that meant when she cooked a delicious meal, as you might can tell, telling her a simple thank you for what she had done that day. Think about those actions and, and those interactions you had. Now, when you think about it, you think about everything that you did to make sure what you were passionate about felt great, was doing great. Those were your earliest actions of philanthropy. Philanthropy has no appearance. If you go to look up philanthropy in the dictionary, you're probably going to find something similar that says philanthropy is the general welfare and promotion of the well-being of others. When you think about those experiences that you had as a child, you think to your childhood and you promoted the welfare of others, you had that thing you were very passionate about, couldn't you say that you were doing whatever you could to make sure that thing was well? That shows each and every one of us that we have a philanthropist on the inside. I conducted a small undergraduate research here in my first year at Georgia State. As a student assistant with the development office, I began to learn about philanthropy, people who give, learning about people who are passionate about supporting a cause. I wanted to take this a little deeper and think about how philanthropy truly affects our society and how it starts in its earliest stages. So I went and did a research on the early motivations that make people want to start engaging in philanthropy. And this consisted of a small research with about 15 high school students. This research interviewed them and asked them questions that focused around how they perceive philanthropy and the ways that they see philanthropy in their everyday life. As these students were questioned and I began to get results and finding, 
I found that 100% of these students thought that philanthropy was simply having a lot of money and giving it to a cause. 100% of those students, every student, all 15 students thought that philanthropy was only about giving money. And I can imagine that a lot of us here today, when we think philanthropy, we think money. I also found that a lot of these students as they began to think about philanthropy and why they would want to become a philanthropist. They thought about the well-being of others. We as humans all have the ability to be altruistic. That's common human nature. Each and every one of us has a desire to see others happy. So continue to think about those interactions that you had as a child. Think about the interactions that you have now. We all have those things that we want to see do well. We all have very strong passions that we will do anything we can to make sure it comes into fruition. Also found that some of the students in this small research, they considered themselves to want to give in their future based on social obligation. And this ranged from students saying, well, I want people to have the things that I didn't have. Or they either said something along the lines of, I have so much that I want to be able to give some of what I have to others. And they thought about that social obligation that we face in our society. Further, some of these students also stated that they simply want to give just because it feels good. So everyone had various reasons that they could see themselves being philanthropic, being involved in the community. Yet a common trend is to find they still continued to think philanthropy was all about giving funds. Today, I want to challenge each and every one of your minds to diversify how you view philanthropy. I also want to challenge foundations that fundraise engage in philanthropic interests. Because if you work in the field of philanthropy, you begin to learn a lot of philanthropic jargon, such as in-kind gifts, outright gifts. There's a variety of ways. There's a variety of ways to give to a cause you really care about. So I challenge those foundations to utilize those different reasons and engage our societies in ph philanthropic acts beyond just giving funds. So let's kind of think about those questions we're asking ourselves today. How we think about philanthropy, who we think a philanthropist can be. Many students, they said themselves, none of them felt as though they could be philanthropists in their future. And in a society that is built based upon one person doing for the other, that is a very scary sight. When we further think about philanthropy, further think about my findings in this research, further think about the thoughts that we hold as a general society surrounding philanthropy. Begin to think about your personal life and the things you engage in right now. If each and every one of us is a philanthropist, there is a cause that we care a lot about. I know some of us might care about things going on in politics. Some of us might care about things going on if it's as simple as our family. In ways to better our society, we must realize that those passions become part of our responsibility as philanthropists. Because being a philanthropist is not just about giving funds, it's time that we step up in society and begin to be philanthropists by giving acts of service, giving acts of care and compassion towards those things we really care about. We tend to complain and a lot of us might say, well, this big issue in the world, all the people with money can fix it. Why are we using our resources? However, the things we are passionate about start with us. So I challenge you, I challenge you today. I challenge foundations today. 
I challenge everyone to begin thinking differently in how we see philanthropy. So as you leave today, I ask you to go and think about those causes or those people or these groups, these initiatives that you really care about and engage in philanthropy by stepping up and doing the work that it takes in starting a better society for our future.